Good morning viewers and today I'm going to be talking about how Ritalin works. Uh, Ritalin is a drug that many people with ADHD might take to help uh, bring up their conscious focus. Sorry, pardon me, I'm very tired, it's one in the morning. To bring up their focus and attention in school or university or their job. Now, there's been a lot of controversy around this drug and a lot of concerns and a lot of problems about its similar similar physiological and pharmaceutical appearance to cocaine and amphetamines basically it has very similar effects and long-term effects well m to a much lesser extent of course it's not serious at all to these two drugs uh, this is nothing to worry about I've I take uh, methylphenidate uh, concerted methylphenidate hydrochloride which is a prolonged release drug and yeah, it has none of those major side effects that you'd expect from such class A substances. Um, let's start with the structure, something that's important to know. It's a very complex name, methylphenylpiperidin 2YL acetate. Moving straight off the sheet. Um, this is a type of um, chemical that would usually be used in medicine to control the, the, the uptake and reuptake of things such as adenine, dopamine, dopamine and glutamine in the cortexes of the brain. Within ADHD, the prefrontal and parietal cortex, uh, I'm just going to the prefrontal cortex here, parietal cortex here. Parietal cortex deals with things like movement, control of objects and recollection. Prefrontal cortex deals with things like inhibition, um, recalling things once again, planning, Appropriacy is a key one, and taboo issues, such as maybe swearing or not saying something or being rude to a teacher or calling out in class. And also with long-term focus and remembering to stay on task, something that I often struggle with without taking concerta. Now, to really understand its effect on the brain, we need to start by looking at its effect on a nerve. I have here, you may be able to see this, you should be able to see this pre-drawn nerve and axon. This is very simplistic. I'm just going to get a pen. Remember this. You're going to need it. I'm going to get a pen. Look at that. Here we have um, release channels for all sorts of chemicals. We're only going to be interested in these two. These are going to be, for the sake of this, just one of them. Our dopamine up the release nodes. Now, when a nerve signal comes along here, the electrical impulse will trigger off the macromolecular release of dopamine from this terminal. This will cause a dopamine molecules, let's just draw it like that, to be released here, where it will float around for a very short period of time and bond to here, where it will trigger off another nerve impulse which will go to wherever it needs to end up. Now in people with ADHD uh, this function is supposed is um, according to m recent research reduced um, within especially within the prefrontal cortex the dopamine, adenodopamine and glutamine uh, and adenof Periphrine, um, that I don't think that's the name. I'll post that in the description. Wait, actually, I've got it up here somewhere. Um, norepinephrine, norepinephrine, sorry about that. Norepinephrine, that's what it is, right? Now, the problem is there's not enough dopamine being released across the synaptic cleft, the gap between the two terminals here and here. Now, methylphenidate. I, methylphenidate will solve this by bonding to one of the reuptake here This because the, the um, release also reuptakes the dopamine once it's been used this will eject it afterwards and it'll float back across and it bonds there now what this methylphenidate hydrochloride does is it bonds to the active site here and stops the dopamine from joining back up to the molecules on this side the active site, meaning that it floats around in here. Next time, this comes along here, the electrical impulse, 
there's already one dopamine in here, so it requires less active dopamine within the synaptic cleft to have, trigger off the electrical impulse along here. So in this case, only one needs to be triggered and join over there, reducing the impulse time for it to join across here to reduce the time. It makes the brain so much more efficient at handling these tasks. Now, in normal people, this um, will increase focus as well. And one minute, I seem to have pressed the button on my keyboard. There we are. That blanked out my screen, sorry. And, oops, I. It'll, it will inc also increase activity and function of the prefrontal cortex. However, I s would strongly advise against the recreational use of um, this. It's very similar to amphetamines and cocaine. It's also quite expensive. It's a control drug in many parts, a control drug in all of the US and many parts of the UK. Um, I'm sorry if I, I think that concludes my entire video. Um, if you'd like to know any more, if you feel I've not explained anything, just post your comments in the description. And I'm sorry if I've been sounding a bit tired or lost track at certain times. It is right now, one in the morning, and I'm a little exhausted. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.